morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. It is good to be gathered near and far at a distance as we worship and wait and wonder for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have a handful of announcements for you this morning. So we um, are, you are welcome to purchase poinsettias this December um, to decorate our sanctuary. Those order forms you can find in the trends or it'll also be on our website um, today. Um, they're ten dollars, and you can, um, if you purchase them by the twentieth, that would be perfect. Um, we're doing multiple different drives for different organizations in our community. One of those drives is a diaper drive. We're asking preferably infant and newborn diapers be dropped off in the narthex when worship is happening, or um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays when the office is open. That's for healthy start. We're also doing a drive for our migrant worker ministry. Uh, we're asking for new small and medium men's hoodies. Um, those can be dropped off by December 15th here at church, or if you'd like to give um, with money, that would be wonderful as well. And this morning's special prayers go to Ann Guild and her family at the passing of Bob Guild, her husband. So keeping her and um, their family in their prayers during this time. I invite you now to rise and stand as we join together for the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin. We cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We gather together this morning singing, Comfort, Comfort, Now My Peace.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. We sing, Come Thou of Long Expected Jesus, as the Advent candle is lit. A word from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like a flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, 
The Lord God comes with might. His arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What in the world? What is this? And what is this? Dominic? Dominic? Yeah. Everything is different. I was gone one weekend, and now we have different colors, which I know it's because it's Advent, and that's the color, the blue is the color. We've got this wreath, which I know is an Advent wreath, we've got it every week, blah, blah, blah. But what is this? I have no idea what this is. Well, that's our angel tree. This is the angel tree. Oh, right. The angel tree. I remember having a meeting about this. The angel tree. There are five families on this tree, right? Yep. And there's 33 people. I can see all their names. And it's with Parenting Matters. And people can adopt the families. But we're doing things different than past years, right? Yeah. Because of COVID-19, we're only doing monetary donations. And then Parenting Matters is going to go out and buy all the food, toys, and whatever else anybody else asks for. Okay, that's a great way, I think, for us to still be church and stay safe and support our community in need. Right? Yeah. But these, I know they're quilts. I know that part. But where did they come from? Well, our quilting group made those. The quilting group, they have been busy. And I can only imagine how much love has been stitched into every piece of these quilts. I think, before they get sent off to the people who are in need of them, we should say a prayer over them, dedicate them, send them off with God's blessing. What do you think? Sounds like a great idea. Okay, I'll say a quick prayer. God of peace, we thank you for the people who have come together to create these beautiful quilts, to give gifts, to the people in our community. We ask that with every fiber of them, they are filled with your love. They are filled with your warmth. So when they are wrapped around those individuals, they know how loved they are by you. God, we thank you for the ways you continue to show up and show us how to be church to those in need, those in our community and those um, who are around us. All these things we say out, that have been said out loud and in our hearts we lift up to you now. In your son's holy and precious name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll continue with our message song.
brain. Come now, O Prince of Peace, reconcile your people to one another and to the God we trust. It is in your name and for your sake that we pray. Amen. So last week I was listening to a TED Talk, a young woman who had left an evangelical cult that she had been raised in, her parents and her grandparents, very instrumental in this cult. And she was reflecting on that experience and she could remember very vividly being five years old, dressed in her favorite red pinstripe dress, standing at an intersection in their California town with her dad. And her dad was shouting gospel to everyone who passed by. And as she reflected these years later, she mentioned that that shouting gospel that her dad did didn't seem to draw anybody into loving relationship with God. No matter of fact, it turned people off and angered them and, and frustrated them. Sometimes we think about the season of Advent as a time to shout gospel at people, right? We even have the figure of John the Baptist out in the wilderness saying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, turn around and repent. Shout some gospel. How does that work? Not real well, does it? Not today, anyway. So, instead of shouting gospel, we have this word from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. And you'll notice that the word that comes to us from Isaiah today isn't about repent, turn around. Instead, it's some very familiar words. Comfort. Comfort my people. When we read this in our Following Jesus Together group, we asked, so, what does it make you think of? Andal's Messiah, right? Yes, you can even hear the tenor's voice singing those rich and luscious words. Comfort, speak of peace. The valleys will be filled, the mountains will be made low. It's such a wonderful, promise-filled piece of Scripture. And it comes to us today on the second Sunday of Advent at a time when we could use some peace in our lives and in our world as we struggle with this global pandemic as our country is split and divided, we long for peace. So how? How can these words of Isaiah stir our hearts and our faith that we might embrace the gift that comes to us this Advent? Well, possibly, possibly we start with the location. Where is it that Isaiah is talking? He's speaking about the wilderness and specifically the wilderness between Israel and Babylon in that day. Prepare a royal highway because your God is coming. We know about wilderness. Wilderness being kind of frightening and scary, low on resources. Wilderness that Gary and I got to experience when we were in Israel a few years back. We were in a kibbutz on Ein Gedi right on the the Dead Sea, and we had a free day. We could go out and we could walk and hike in the desert, and they just said, be careful to bring enough water. We thought we did. We took plenty of water for a hot summer's day in Florida. We found out we needed about three times as much water in a desert in Israel. We didn't die of thirst, obviously. 
but we did learn about the scary part of the desert. Being alone, not being able to turn on a faucet and have water. The interesting thing about wilderness and desert is that in the midst of that bland plainness, in the midst of that stripped down experience of not having at our fingertips everything that we need, that is the place where Isaiah says God comes. God enters into our lives in the desert times. Well, you would think that this global pandemic is an unparalleled opportunity for us to have an advent that's kind of desert-like, right? Think of all the things that we aren't doing this advent. No Christmas parties, right? You can cross all those things off your list that would take all of that time and attention away from the preparing for the coming of the Lord. Will we use this wilderness time this year to prepare our hearts? God comes, Isaiah said into the unhurried, unplanned, unfilled moments of our days. And how does God come? <laughs> well, Isaiah tells us that too. Not as a fierce warrior ready to do battle, but as a shepherd. A shepherd who reaches down and picks up the weak lamb and who leads the mother's sheep through the valley through the difficult ways. Our God comes with gentleness to care and shepherd and provide. But then the question, of course, is why? Why does God come? And Isaiah tells us that too. God comes in order to pay our debt. As a matter of fact, to pay our debt double time. So some people, some commentators, some scholars say that what Isaiah is referring to is the fact that the nation of Israel became the vehicle for the salvation of all nations, not just Israel, but all the peoples of the world. Other scholars say this. In ancient Israel, when someone went bankrupt, when they had debts that they could not pay, they were required to take a piece of, of papyrus or a, a sheepskin and to write down each debtor and what was owed to each debtor. And then to pin that list to the fence post outside their home so that anyone passing by could see to whom you owed what you owed. And as you paid back, because even if you went bankrupt, you were still responsible to pay back your debts, as you paid them back, your debtor would scratch through the debt and write paid in full. But perhaps, if you were very fortunate, you would have a benefactor who would come by and pay all your debts off for you. And when they did that, they wouldn't just scratch through each individual debt. What they would do is take the piece of legal register and double it over. Fold it in half and pin it back on the nail to signify that all your debts had been doubled over, paid in full. We who follow Christ talk about the cross as being where Jesus doubles over our debts, pays for all of our sinfulness, whatever it is that has wedged itself into our lives and separated us from the love and grace of God. This Advent, we don't have to shout gospel at people. We're given good news to share. The good news that God indeed comes to save us, to redeem us, to bring us peace. And, and not just us peace, you and me, but maybe you've been to a wedding where there's been a tower of champagne glasses set up with one at the very top 
And the bride and the groom both pour into that top glass. And as that glass is filled to overflowing, representing the love and joy of a couple, it then cascades down and fills all the other champagne glasses until they too overflow. And that image, that image is Christ peace, filling us and not just staying with us, but flowing over our lives, into our families and communities and world to bring the peace that indeed passes our understanding and keeps our hearts and minds in the Christ who comes. May it be so. Please rise as we join together in professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain us and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we continue to follow you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew creation where it is in need of your healing touch. As the seasons continue to change, transform our hearts to take notice to the world around us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. For people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us in noticing and reaching out to the most vulnerable, the marginalized, and those whose voices are silenced. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Tender God, you celebrate the joys and join us in the sorrows of life. We pray for those who are struggling to find joy this season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely and tend to those who are sick. As we find ourselves physically separate from our loved ones, grant us peace to our weary hearts and wrap us in your healing embrace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Everlasting God, we give thanks to all of those who have gone before us and those who will die today. As we find ourselves missing them a little extra during this season, help us remember their presence and light, trusting they are resting in eternal home. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns.
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is given and shed for you.
in peace, prepare for the way of the Lord. Amen.